Hey there friends, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a fascinating topic that's sure to inspire and uplift you. We will be discussing the topic of barrenness and the biblical approach to overcoming it. Discover how to reconcile with God and seek His favor in your quest for children, and learn about the hidden opportunities to mend your relationship with Him. Join us for a deeply inspiring and supportive exploration of faith, healing, and hope. Navigating infertility and childlessness is often accompanied by a complex array of raw emotions and challenges. Some key aspects are deep grief and loss. Individuals facing infertility frequently experience intense sorrow over the unfulfilled desire to become parents. Guilt and self-blame. Infertility often triggers strong feelings of self-blame and guilt, with individuals questioning their self-worth and choices. This emotional strain is exacerbated by societal expectations and personal pressures. Isolation and loneliness. Those dealing with infertility frequently feel disconnected from others who are parents, leading to feelings of loneliness and estrangement. This can put a strain on relationships with family and friends who may not fully grasp the emotional burden. Emotional roller coaster. The journey through infertility is marked by significant emotional fluctuations, ranging from hope during treatment attempts to despair when they are unsuccessful. This constant emotional upheaval can be draining and difficult to handle. Stigma and social pressure. Societal stigma and the perceived inability to meet traditional expectations can increase emotional stress. The pressure to become parents often magnifies feelings of inadequacy and judgment. These difficulties highlight the deep emotional impact of infertility and childlessness, emphasizing the importance of empathetic support and understanding. Stay tuned for a deeply inspiring and supportive exploration of faith, healing, and hope. Are you struggling with the journey of infertility and the pain of childlessness? You're not alone. In this video, we'll delve into a holistic view of infertility, uncovering its causes and the emotional toll it can take. We'll also explore how biblical wisdom can guide us through these trying times, offering hope and practical steps to overcome barrenness. Did you know that God addresses even the most dire situations in Isaiah 54? This chapter is full of guidance and reassurance for those facing childlessness. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Isaiah 54, verse 1. In verses 1 to 10, Isaiah 54 provides encouragement and faith that even in this situation, trusting God will lead to fertility and victory. The chapter urges trust and obedience, assuring them that if they take responsibility for the fatherless, the motherless, and the less privileged, they will emerge victorious. So, my friends, let's take a cue from Isaiah and remind ourselves that even in the toughest times, there's hope. Trust in God and have faith that He will guide us through any obstacle we may face. For the benefit of everyone, let's take the full text of Isaiah 54 relating to overcoming barrenness or childlessness. That's from verses 1 to 10. Isaiah 54 verse 1. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. Set the Lord to enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. Three, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. For fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. Five, for thy Maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. 6. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken, and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth. When thou wast refused, saith thy God. 7. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Eat in a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment. 
but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. 9. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn, that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. 10. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. Exploring the causes of infertility, a holistic perspective. Let's delve into the factors that might contribute to infertility. While some causes could stem from accidents, diseases, or genetic influences, it's also essential to consider these issues from a spiritual and legal perspective. How to reconcile with God and seek His favor? How can we mend our relationship with God to ease His displeasure and ensure He remains present in our lives? Making amends involves addressing past wrongs and seeking forgiveness. Here's how you can approach this important process. Ezekiel 33 verse 15 If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life, without committing iniquity. He shall surely live, he shall not die. 16 None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful, and right, he shall surely live. Ezekiel 33 verses 15 and 16 is the standard for addressing our karmic debts and obligations. It is also in line with the new testimony of Christ for the remission of sins. Note the conditions for the forgiveness of sins herein stated as none of the sins he had committed will be mentioned unto him. We must earnestly strive to correct our past mistakes, even those we're unaware of. This is both just and righteous. By making a genuine effort to amend our wrongs, we allow the mercy seat of God, positioned above the testimony, to intervene and mitigate our further punishment. Exodus 25 verse 21 And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. 22 And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Our genuine attempts to correct our past mistakes elevate us before the mercy seat of God, where our efforts are met with divine forgiveness that transcends our previous errors and offers us liberation. This profound truth underscores the importance of placing the mercy seat above the testimony, symbolizing grace over judgment. When it comes to making amends for issues related to children or childbearing, the process often involves both personal reflection and spiritual guidance. Nature and divine influence typically steer us towards understanding and rectifying our mistakes. In this journey, seeking alignment with higher principles and listening to the wisdom of both the natural world and divine counsel can provide clarity and direction. Let's look at practical steps to take advantage of what God has initiated to help us remedy the situation. It may seem unusual. But childless couples often find themselves surrounded by needy children in schools, hospitals, or orphanages. These children appearing in their lives can be seen as opportunities to address their own challenges with barrenness. This is a chance to make meaningful amends with God. Rather than waiting for your biological children, consider caring for these children in need. This approach resonates with the message found in Isaiah 54 which suggests that such acts of kindness can be a powerful remedy. Isaiah 54, verse 1. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord, to enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations, spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. 5. For thy Maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. 
So, what can you expect from God if you embrace this path? What promises does he offer for those who follow his guidance? Let's explore what he has in store. 9. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn, that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. 10. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. So, my friends, let's take a cue from Isaiah and remind ourselves that even in the toughest times, there's hope. Trust in God and have faith that he will guide us through any obstacle we may face. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you found this video inspiring or uplifting, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Make ready for Jesus for more content like this. Until next time, stay strong and remember, there is always hope.